pain is one of those unfortunate situations where injury isn't the exception, it's the norm. Over 80% of people will experience a bout of severe lower back pain in their lifetime. If that wasn't bad enough, once you experience a bout of lower back pain or a lower back injury, you're six times more likely to have that injury reoccur in the next 12 months. You may think that just because you're fit, just because you're active, you're gonna be protected from lower back pain. Unfortunately, active people are just as likely, if not more likely, to experience lower back pain than the sedentary population. And once you get into the vicious cycle of lower back pain and management, you can feel trapped. Like clockwork, every few months you're dealing with chronic flare-ups and you can't remember the last time you really felt good. Strength training starts to feel terrifying, even though when done right, it can just be the one thing that you need the most. If you're watching this video right now, chances are you have lower back pain or you've dealt with lower back pain in the last year or so. I'm gonna discuss the most common mistakes that people with chronic, achy, flared up, injured lower backs are making and other ways to avoid them. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they're dealing with chronic or acute lower back pain is trying to rely 110% on the chiro or the physical therapist to make you feel better. Taking your own body into your own hands and having self-sufficiency with the movement practice and taking steps on a day-to-day -day on your own is the next step that you need to, in order to get back to training, but also to have longevity with the training that you're after. Passive therapies like chiropractic or physical therapy are just what they sound like. They're passive and they don't really have a huge transference. Transfer happens with your own physical practice and moving your own body and getting the skill set to gain physical autonomy again. While rehabilitation has its place, there are things that you can be doing on your own to move better, to feel better, to function better, to get more longevity out of your training and your lifestyles. After people flare up their lower backs, they gravitate towards doing nothing. But doing nothing is one of the worst things that we can do because the deactivation model doesn't do anything to strengthen our weak links. People become their MRIs. You are not your MRI, you are not your diagnosis. We need to get back into the gym as quickly as possible while training the movement patterns that we can do pain-free, while monitoring the ones that we're having trouble with and trying to improve those weak links in the process. One of the most pivotal mistakes that people make is going loose at their core and having their spine move through unwanted ranges of motion, especially under a lot of intensity, a lot of frequency, and a lot of total volume with these movements of the squat and the deadlift. What we need to be doing is putting an absolute emphasis on bracing optimally at the core so we can keep this strong and inherently stable region of the body locked and loaded. If we can minimize the amount of movement, especially under heavy loading, and we can improve the bracing process, we can reduce the cumulative stress that goes through this really, really pivotal region of the body. I get it, the squat, the deadlift, they are sexy, we love to train them. But many times when people are dealing with chronic based back injuries, they're skipping one of the pivotal foundational movement patterns, and that's the single leg movement patterns with lunges and single leg RDLs. This is one of the simplest fixes by just implementing into the program that can strengthen the entire weak link that is the lower body integrating with the core and the upper body to create strong, stable units around the lumbar spine and the lower back in general. When it comes to trying to make your chronically flared up lower back feel better, stretching and foam rolling it is a big no-no. This is a strong and stable unit. We need to add more strength and more stability into this unit so we can get out of pain, not add more mobility into the chain. While every case is gonna be different, a vast majority of people will do well with stretching or mobility work that happens at the shoulders or at the hips and leaving the lower back alone keeping an emphasis on bracing strategies and keeping it in a strong, neutral, and stable position. And finally, one of the last mistakes that people make when they head into the gym and they try to re-implement their training programs is going on machine training only and avoiding any free weight exercises. While this can elicit a training effect, it is also not working to improve weak links. Gaining results with your training that are not only sustainable, but also bulletproofing yourself for longevity is all about correcting weak links. So machine training can be a portion of your program, but we need to be addressing some of these bigger, more major issues that happen with the body moving on its own through space. 
I hear this idea all the time that people have to squat with the barbell on their back and they have to pull it off the ground with a couple wagon wheels on the side. This is called force feeding theoretical movements. Instead, try to find the optimal movement pattern that you can train hard, you can train pain free, and you can start moving forward in your recovery. The real centerpiece of this guide is the movement pyramid. You'll also find it on the page below. Here's what it means and what it will do for you. These movement pyramids show progressions of exercises. The bottom is the most approachable and the top or the peak is the most technical or difficult. I want you to figure out what the most difficult variation that you can perform with good form is and without aggravating your injury. Then use that variation in your training. If a workout you're doing calls for sets of 10 to 12 on barbell back squats, but the goblet squat is the most difficult variation you can manage without pain, great. Get a heavy dumbbell or kettlebell and rock those goblet squats. Just to be clear, the peak of the pyramid does not have to be the goal. You can do just fine doing front-loaded squats and single leg deadlifts for years. And if you start at the bottom, that's just fine. Bodyweight squats and cable pull-throughs are great movements, and you'd be well-served spending more serious time with both of these. Now let's talk about some big rules to guide you through the training process of the movement pyramid. First, when you're injured, go light for a while, but not forever. At first, monitoring loads and chasing more pump work is a great idea, but you shouldn't limit yourself to pure bodybuilding for life. Smart reimplementation of movement patterns trained for strength is the next step to long-term progress. Second, don't limit yourself to one definition of strength. Look for ways to increase volume, not just increase weight or 1RMs. This might mean using bands or other accommodating resistances rather than just adding more plates. It could also mean turning old training model upside down. Do unilateral strength work with the load in your hands or bilateral finishers like high rep goblet squats or trap bar deadlifts. And finally, walk. I'm not just talking about going for a lazy stroll. I'm talking about the loaded carry variations, which are some of the best ways to bulletproof your body against pain and injuries, and they don't have to be complicated. At the end of a workout, just pick up a couple heavy dumbbells or a trap bar and go for a walk back and forth two to three times, but also go for simple walks as often as possible. Walking has been shown to provide relief from acute lower back pain, but it also gets you up out of the chair, and sitting is probably contributing to your pain. You may not think walking counts, but trust me, it does. If you're making mistakes with some of these things that we mentioned, make sure that you take them out of your program, but that's not good enough. We're gonna re-implement some strategies into your program so you can start rebuilding your lower back and regaining your longevity. The one redeeming quality about lower back pain, if there is one, is that the solutions to fix it are all things that are gonna make you stronger and more capable overall not just things at your lower back, but strengthening your entire body. My hope is that you can get out of the mindset of being limited and start chasing down your athletic and your physique goals fearlessly. Use this tool and make smart substitutions and get back into building your best self.